Along the British section of the Western Front, in the skies over the Somme, the Royal Flying Corps maintains its command of the air, the aerial observers grimly carrying out their missions. I was doing end-on photography with Brussington. Rather a sticky job. The Hun threw everything at you at that height. Rifles, machine guns, field gun, the lot. My petrol tank was plugged. I was lucky not to damage the camera. The photographs proved quite useful. On the Western Front, the situation was constantly changing. You were having to react to, 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 to events as they happened, and these events were taking place all the time. So the pilots who were going up and the observers and taking these photographs had to get down very, very quickly. And the photographs had to be developed very, very quickly because there was absolutely no time to waste. In a good picture like this, taken from six to 8,000 feet, it's incredible what you can see. Now, a casual glance at this would never reveal a well-camouflaged gun position, but if you study it through a magnifying glass, you can see a lot of detail, and maybe even the tracks that the tractors for guns leave alongside hedges. Individually, the pictures are small maps of the ground, but they can be pieced together to form a large mosaic of the enemy's lines. In the skies above Verdun, over the frightful continuing battle of attrition, French airmen confront the German air service in the world's first large-scale air battles. Without control of the air, the French observation machines are unable to perform the task of detecting targets for their artillery. To watch the full-length version of this video, visit our full streaming channel at www.historicalmachines.tv, where you can rent to view the full movie.